to allow for censorship of any political or potentially controversial messaging. Khalil will also tell us that our putting controversial messages up here will cause the university to crack down on them and will ruin the chances for students next year to be able to paint murals up on these boards. We told Khalil they should find that problematic. This is a university. Absolutely. This is a school newspaper. Absolutely. Not only should they be pushing back against the university for such suppression of controversy and freedom of speech, but they should be the very ones standing next to all of us right here at our side fighting the university and protecting our freedom of speech on this campus. So the good news is, oh, and by the way, I'm feeling a lot of school spirit today, so I'm wearing my University of Hawaii scarf. Um, the good news is that we're all here today. Um, many of those of you who are here could not make it over the weekend. And we have an opportunity now to organize as students and as faculty on this campus, not only to demand that we promote and protect free speech on campus, but also that we begin to organize to hold UH accountable to their role in the desecration of Mauna Wakea. I want to thank everybody for coming. I'm going to turn the mic over to fellow student Andre Perez. Um, this, thank you everybody for coming. This is definitely a, a peaceful yet energetic protest. Um, I just want to point out also that there just happens to be a mural right next to ours that is celebrating and glorifying the Gemini telescopes. And when we try to explain to Kaleo that that is just as political of a statement and a slap in our face, and yet we still respect his right to have that up there, they just didn't want to hear it. That's right. So we do respect even those with opposing opinions of ours to be able to express themselves on campus as well. I also want to note that on Saturday when we posted it down and we they let us finish it on Sunday, and it was Monday morning when we were not here that they came and painted over our statement about UH. Not only did they paint over our statement about UH and the Hawaiian Place of Learning, but they painted over um, statements of support that were chalked by our Chamorro and Marshallese allies yeah. on this campus. Trying to suppress us, yeah, and trying to um, 
impose some kind of power or authority over us. And it's very important to understand this. This guy, Rob Riley, is prejudiced against our message and against our politics. And he's utilizing that prejudice in a way uh, that asserts power by trying to suppress our voice as an uh, employee of Kalel. When you mix prejudice with power, the outcome is usually defined as racism. We've got to be real clear on that. In this case, I would say that we have elements of institutional racism that are being imposed upon Hawaiian students trying to suppress our free speech and our voice and our right, our right to express our politics and our cultural values. And even more so, I want to read to you from some of the, the strategic plan, the mission statement, the vision, and the core values that the university has officially adopted as part of their, their tenets. So in the vision statement, UH Monoa says that they are grounded in traditional values of the host culture and they strive for excellence in teaching. In their mission, the university says that they are dedicated not only to academic research and excellence, but also to serving with aloha, the local, national, and international communities. Taking as a historic trust the native Hawaiian values embedded in the concepts of kuleana, ohana, and apukua'a that serve to remind us of our responsibilities to family, community, and environment. The university says that they are dedicated to fertile, engaged, and ethical learning, characterized by a free exchange of ideas, shared intellectual resources, cutting-edge scholarship, and high academic education. They, they call this a Hawaiian place of learning that's conceptually grounded in Native Hawaiian knowledge and values that cut across each of their strategic goals. The university pro purports to promote a place of Hawaiian learning and to implement processes of a Hawaiian sense of place. Yeah? And they are positioning themselves among the world's leading indigenous serving institutions demonstrated by their commitment to access and, and the success of Native Hawaiians. There can be nothing successful about silencing Hawaiian students. The ability, the ability to engage in critical thought in, in, uh, in, in uh, opposition in a, in a way that is peaceful and, and uh, engaging it's really fundamental to academics and scholarship. To be able to disagree is the fundamentals of academics. And yet, they're telling us that we cannot disagree. But instead, we, we must uh, conform to what they think is proper behavior for Hawaiians. We cannot allow that to happen. Yeah? We, we have to assert our right to free speech and understand that this is not even a bigger issue than free speech. The Mauna Kea issue has been ongoing for many years now. It's a very important part of Hawaiian politics and Hawaiian struggle. And we cannot allow the very uh, institution that, that is at the core of this issue to suppress us right here in this, this so-called realm and space of free thought and free speech. So we must challenge, we must always challenge and assert our right to be heard and to express our politics in ways that are uh, dignified. But yet we cannot allow ourselves, you know, we cannot call town, um, we cannot be afraid to speak up for fear of stepping on somebody else's toes. Uh, we must, and as our Queen Lili said, only power, we must stand firm, yeah? And if you look here, I want to point this out. What they did was very insensitive, disrespectful. Not only did they paint over our message, but they put their stamp on it. Yeah, they put their stamp over ours. So this is what we call erasure, yeah? They want to render us invisible people with no voice. We're not going to allow that to happen today. 
We're not going to allow that to happen ever. The irony and the, the tragic irony is look at the name of the newspaper that is silencing Hawaii. Kaleo. The voice. How ironic that they, uh, they appropriate and adopt our, our native language, our Oleo Hawaii, while simultaneously suppressing our voice, erasing us under their layers of paint. Not today, gang. We're gonna pull in, we're gonna stack together. We're gonna push back. Not today, not tomorrow. We must remember, I wanna point this out. The guy, Lauren Thurston Jr., his name is uh, Rob Riley. And uh, he's choosing to do this. Yes? Nobody directed him to do this. He's making a determination on him by himself to come and censor us. He could also choose to be an advocate for free speech. Right. He could also choose to represent us to the university right. and to be progressive in principle and represent us to his bosses and say, no, this is the right thing to do. But he's not choosing to do that. He's choosing to take the responsibility upon his shoulders to silence Hawaiians. So let's think about that. In closing, I want to uh, say to everyone, Mahalo Nui for coming out. Uh, we may have to come back again, and that's okay. We, must, we will always uh, onipa'a and, and fight for our right to speak, to be heard, to express our politics, to express our Hawaiian values in this so-called sense of this Hawaiian place of learning. And we, we will mo'omau, we will persevere. Mahalo nui. Aloha. the Marianas Club of the Tomorrow People and we stand here in solidarity with the Kanaka Maoli who are fighting to protect their sacred places. So that is what I'm here today for. We need to realize that those of us that are not the indigenous peoples of this land, this issue is not something we can simply walk on by and simply not do anything about. This issue is our issue as well. As temporary dwellers here, we have a responsibility to also do our part to help protect this land. And that's why I'm proud to see those of us who are not Hawaiian out here today. Give yourselves all a round of applause for standing in solidarity. Once again, it's all part of a system of oppression and censorship. As in the Marianas, they're trying to take one of our islands. The United States military wants to take our islands so they can use it as a bombing range. Exactly. So we feel solidarity. We feel the pain of having to take your sacred places away from you. And we also know that on Monday morning, this was spray painted over. But it is Tuesday morning, and look at all of us here today. It took overnight to get this going. That is a pure sign of the strength, the endurance, and the perseverance of all of us who are united against this sort of oppression and censorship. Another thing is watching the news last night, or this morning, some students said that it's UH property, so he is okay with seeing them spray paint over this. But as Andre just said, we all know this is not UH property. We know this land belongs to the indigenous peoples, so we must recognize that. And lastly, I just want to say that I'm glad, I hope some of you are skipping class 
because if this university, if this institution is not going to stand for critical thinking and instead wants to make you a robot of the system, then it is not worth going to class. Whether you're indigenous or not, because this is all our issue. And Sadamasi Toto Samsu, let us all go there and fight for what is right. First and foremost, I want to say um, mahalo for coming out today and showing solidarity in this. Uh, I've never used one of these before, so it's a little. Um, I have to get used to it. But I just want to say thank you so much for coming out today and showing solidarity in this issue. Um, you know, when we do community pieces, uh, especially art, it draws a lot of people from and their and their ohana and their friends. And this weekend, we actually had you know small little kiki that could barely even walk. They're still crawling, two years old, um, with their moms right by their sides, uh, helping to to paint this beautiful mural. And it was a very beautiful kind of uh, experience to go through and, and then you know that this is a community thing and that it's not just me or uh, just myself kind of putting this out out there it's all of us and this issue affects all of us and I think through art we can put this issue to the forefront and allow the whole public not just a few people behind closed doors in a meeting uh, to decide whether or not the telescope should be built. It should be voiced in the public arena so that people can make the decision, a holistic decision, of whether or not they want the telescopes to be built. And so everyone can, you know, put their mono'o in, um, and that can be the deciding factor. Not, oh, the 30 meter telescope is built, but um, you didn't have a voice and you really want to take it back. It's too late then. This is our chance to stand up and say, we don't want it, and we're all here in solidarity. Like I said, kids, little babies, and their families, like who you know well older than I am, all here uh, together, touching this wall. I actually want you guys, even though, you know, many of you are here this weekend, as we pass the mural and make our way to Kaleo and around Hawaii Hall, just before leaving, just kind of touch it, and um, just feel that, that this wall is, is representative of our entire voice. So make sure that you kind of like, just, you know, don't just walk past it, recognize it. Um, and again, mahalo so much for being here. This is huge. Uh, this is way more than I initially expected. Uh, so thank you so much for taking the time um, to come and listen to us and to see our uh, our art, and it will be up for the next year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's not going away. Um, and as a lot, we have we actually brought chalk and stuff for people to write on the wall. But we're also asking as we're walking our, along our march to Kaleo and to Hawaii Hall to use that chalk to write your message on the sidewalk or on the spaces that we walk over as we're walking to to these places. Um, and the shirt that I'm wearing today kind of encompasses everything that I'm feeling and thinking right now. That art is the absolute fear. Um, and so that's, I just want to end with that. And uh, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here. We're going to cover the march to. Um, Kaleo office, let's go. We are marching for a painting over of the painting that happened probably Monday morning. Uh, so this is at the overnight uh, spontaneous uh, demo. A lot of people uh, missing class, a lot of people like me from the community. I got a notice of it. Late last night. There are hundreds of people. This is really impressive.
We have live stream viewers from all over the nation, including uh, New Jersey. This is a massive demo. Outside the offices, I'm standing behind Andre Perez, graduate student here at University of Hawaii. Entering uh, the building, when we enter, we might I might lose uh, bandwidth, but uh, if I cut out, I'll try and uh, get back on. So. Any student, for that matter, should be 
financial sensor on this campus. outside the perimeter so we can uh, try and follow that. Includes a very uh, organized, very well attended uh, demonstration with a lot of participation. It was called Ad Hoc Overnight. And right here in front of the Kaleo office, Kaleo is the newspaper of the uh, University of Hawaii.